Sounds good. So my name is Brian Rader. I'd like to call to order the Patent Township Planning Commission meeting um, for uh, April 5th. And our first item of business is the approval of the minutes. And before we make a motion to approve the minutes, there are two corrections that, that we are aware of, maybe more, but the two that I'm aware of come from Jim Payne. And he had uh, made reference that uh, the meeting minutes, item five, the vote count is missing for public record. And the vote count was seven, yay, seven yeses, zero nays. And the second correction, item 13, the regular meeting, it was a regular meeting, it was not a work session, and it was adjourned at 5.30 p.m. Those were the two uh, items that were, that he, that we wanted to correct in the March 1st approval of minutes. Apart from that, is there any other corrections to the minutes. If not, do we have a motion to approve? I will make a motion to approve. I'll second then. Thank you. Motion carried. Next item is the. You need to vote on that. Oh, sorry. We, we do. Thank you, Nicole. You're welcome. Um, everyone in favor of approving the minutes, say aye or raise your hand. Aye. Aye. Any nays? Motion carried. You want to go around, Brian, and tell everyone who's on the planning commission? <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> okay. And Rich, we'll start with you. Thank okay. you for slowing us down. No, it's fine. I'm, you know, important. Uh, I want to make sure that I watch the Phillies at seven. <laughs> uh, on the planning commission <clears throat> go ahead rich oh i'm uh rich Schmidt on the patent township planning commission <clears throat> next i'm Sam? harry harry McAllister on the planning commission i'm sure i'm sure Commit collins on the planning commission Bill Burnett, I'm on the Planning Commission. Guys, that's everybody. The only person that we that will be joining us that's also on the Planning Commission is Jim Payne. And Jim right now is not with us. However, he has shared all of his comments until he is able to join us, which will probably be here perhaps very soon. Thank let's, you, guys. Let's do staff real quick. Why don't you start, Nicole? Okay, my name is Nicole Pollock and I am the Township Planner. And I'm Doug Council Erickson. Patrick, I'm the Zoning Officer. Go ahead, Alex. Alexandra Castrocini, Assistant Township Engineer. Steve. Steve Cass, and I'm the Township Engineer and Public Works Director. And I'm, I'm Doug Erickson. I'm the Township Manager. Very good. Thank you all. Do public comments now. So for public comments, anything that we we have a long agenda this evening, um, this afternoon. And so is there anything that is not on our uh, agenda that we want that that we want to talk about? If so, now is the time to do that. Again, I'm look we're looking for things that are not on the agenda at this moment. Is there any public comments? Very good. Um, so, Doug, uh, were you? Should we keep our order or or try and? Yeah, let's stay in order. We didn't send anything out about changing order, so I don't want anybody who, I don't want to miss any comments from people. So, we'll just have to slog through it. Very good. <laughs> okay. Does anyone want to tee us up on our first uh, item for the? Uh, retail market establishment. Yes, I will do that. Um, so this is a sketch plan, which means that we're not going to take any formal action on this item. It's more for informal um, informational purposes and to gather input and make any comments on the plan as the planning commission sees fit. 
Uh, so the site of this plan is located at 1869 North Atherton Street. There was an existing business here, which was Lore's Auto Service and or Lore's, Lore's Auto Sales and Service. And they're proposing to add an addition to the existing site of 2,523 square feet. Um, the sketch plan was attached with the agenda materials. So at this time, if the, I don't know, Doug, is there somebody with us that wants to speak about this? Um, I'm Wasn't not sure. <laughs> Fair enough. I'm, hello, I'm, I'm Bob Kaufman from Midpen Engineering. I can address, you know, I'd, I'd like to talk about it. I have a couple of questions for you. Go ahead, Randy. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, Laura's Garage uh, put their addition on in 2009, uh, and basically we're, we're, hello? We can hear you. Okay. Uh, basically what uh, Mr. Yang wants to do is uh, put, as you can see on the, on the right sketch, just uh, expand it out to make it a rectangular building instead of an L-shaped building. And uh, I had a couple of questions. When Laura's Garage was uh, done back in 2009, on the west side uh, of the property, there was uh, a 75 or 70 foot front yard setback. Um, and it's because the road, I believe, went up and serviced possibly a, a trailer court or something. And I was just, I wanted to verify. Um, the front, rear, and side setbacks for this. It's, it's completely surrounded by roads and access roads. And just so I have an idea of what we're dealing with, uh, I'd, like, I'd like to verify what the setbacks would be. Got it. Ken, is that something you're able to answer or do we need to get back to? Randy, what you're gonna be looking at in the C1 district, the front yard setback is 70 feet and the rear is 30, or you can go with 50 and 50. Um, then I think there's a sliver of ground that is adjacent to Patriot Lane that is not associated with Lores. That being the case, then Lores would not front on Patriot Lane, so it would be a side yard setback. And I also believe that what used to be an alley was a private alley. So since it's not a public street, we're not going to assess you a front yard setback on that either. That's going to be a side yard setback. Okay. Side yard. <laughs> it's my concern was the, uh, the way that it was done when Lors added their addition um, there was an existing non-compliance with the 70 foot setback on the west side of the lot. And my concern was adding the addition, squaring that off. We would be continuing the non-conformity, but since that's gonna be viewed as a side yard setback, it, it's a non-issue. Um, also, uh, the only other two Two real questions I have are uh, there's a, a, a 15 foot uh, landscape buffer requirement. The, the existing uh, landscaping is, is roughly 10 feet on the west side and the north side, and actually on the east side. Really, there's no landscaping in the front. Um, would that still apply to this lot? 15 foot or can we uh, stick with the 10 foot existing uh, landscape buffer? We would need to review the landscape requirements. And as the landscape buffer gets smaller, depending on the location and the adjacent properties, sometimes there's the requirement to install a fence okay. as the buffer gets so small to create some type of separation. But I think that's something we're going to have to review whenever we look at this plan, since it, it is going to be an infill plan. Okay. And it's it's all commercial around it. Correct. So I didn't know if you'd be requiring additional buffering, uh, landscape buffering in there or not. Um, the 
third issue I, I, I had was um, because this is an enlargement and we're changing the use, um, your ordinance requires a, a loading dock. And the way the parcel is, it's really not suitable for a dock. Um, I have a loading zone shown in the uh, southeast corner of the lot. Um, would that suffice or are you still going to require a dock? No, we require a loading zone. A loading zone, okay. Okay, which I am providing there in the uh, southeast corner of the park. Yeah, I think Jim Payne had asked about that too. I think there's a, yeah, I looked at the wording and the, it says zone in one section and it says loading berth in another section, but it all just means loading zones. Um, okay. So I think there's one required for the first 5,000 or maybe a second one required for if you're over 5,000, but uh, those detail questions, Ken, can work with you as you get your plan ready to submit. Okay. Um, we're uh, assuming, well, one more thing. Uh, <laughs> our parking area, uh, the calculation comes out to uh, <clears throat> 25.13 spaces required. I was only able to get um, 25 spaces on there. I couldn't expand it up to 26. Um, do you think that'll suffice or will I need a zoning variance for that? Go ahead, Ken. I mean, the real question is, you can ask for a waiver. Uh, okay. But I guess the question is, is there somewhere on this site that we can eke out one more parking space is the question. Well, I, I can probably find one. I mean, I put in a planting area on the west side there um, because of the length, you know, the number of parking spaces in a row. I, I honestly, it's been a while since I did the sketch and I don't require, I remember the exact section of the ordinance that requires that. Um, is, is it possible that I might be able to eliminate that and, and put a parking space in there? Depending on, we'll have to go back and read the exact wording in that section because it, it discusses your parking aisles and so forth and the size of the parking field. So, and I don't know that right off the top of my head, but that's something we'll be able to discuss, that's for sure. Okay, okay. <clears throat> Since we're not really expanding the this coverage, it's basically we're building on top of existing impervious coverage. I, I really didn't delve into stormwater management um, I, I know when Lors uh, expanded their facility, they did have an approved stormwater management plan. Um, I mean, we can we can run the numbers and see if we would have to expand on that. But I was kind of under the assumption that since we weren't really increasing imper impervious coverage, the stormwater management would be suitable. We'll have to take a look at that and review that because depending on if there were any changes in our stormwater regulations from whenever Lors did the upgrade until today, uh, there could have been some changes that you might have to do some work to get up to today's standards. Okay. Okay. Um, those were the only questions that I had, gentlemen and ladies. Um, do you have any questions for me? Um, Randy, thank you. And, and now let's turn this to the uh, fellow planning commission members. Uh, does anyone have any questions for uh, for Randy or Ken or or Doug? If not, I I did have two. I have two questions. Um, my first question is: So, Randy, we. 
we really um, work with Taco Bell to have them wrap a sidewalk around the back. So now that part portion has been completed. So we're looking at maybe a, a short distance where there is no sidewalk. Is that, was that something that you were thinking of doing? I hadn't taken that into account, to be honest. That's something we could look into though. Um, I kind of, it, that whole area is, is connected with the exception of this, of, of the, this particular area. Um, so it seemed logical to try and connect it. Sure, you're, you're talking about the area at the back of the lot, along correct. that access road? Yeah, correct. Okay, uh, sidewalk. And then, um, and then Ken, this is more of a question for you. Um, when I drove by there, I didn't really, I didn't notice much of a buffer uh, around the, the surrounding parcels. Did I just not notice it? I guess I'm not quite sure Taco which Bell. parcels you're talking about. Taco Bell. Uh, Taco Bell has, it has the required landscaping needed around it. I, I guess because it's so new, you don't notice it. it. It must be the issue. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure once things start to leaf out, it's going to be much more noticeable. Yeah. Um, okay. So, Randy, uh, I, I guess, uh, and I, I didn't, Ken, did we answer the question for the buffer? Was it 15 feet or 10? And as I said, what we need to do is when we get it in, we're going to have to review that and look at what the requirement is going to be. And some of our buffer yards, you can incorporate a fence once they get so small to meet those requirements, but it depends on what it's buffering against. As this property is going to be commercial on, you know, apparently all, all the sides except the front, which will be the highway. Uh, I'm not quite sure that, you know, the buffer yard requirements are not going to be near as stringent. Got it. I did notice that the topography is kind of steep where that sidewalk would, would be, um, with a, a mental note. Any other comments from planning commission? Staff, any comments? Any public comments? Doug, are we having to do anything in terms of we're not making a motion or anything? No, just just for comments, conversation with the with the developer. So guys, we got a big agenda ahead of us. I'm going to move on unless anyone else wants to chime in. Thank you, Randy, for uh, for uh, sharing your thoughts. Thanks for your comments. You're Talk welcome. Next item five is Rocky Properties LLC. And do we have uh, anyone that would like to introduce that? Yep, I can do that. Let's back up here. So this plan is located at 670 Gracewood Boulevard. It is 6.74 acres. It's located in the office buffer district, rural residential, and part of it is in the I-99 interchange overlay. Um, it is proposed, the applicant is proposing to change the existing use from a residence to um, office space, and they're gonna make some upgrades to the property, uh, specifically the driveway and adding ADA parking and they're going to install the shared youth path along the, the front of the property there. So that will kind of fill in a missing link on that path along Gracewoods Boulevard. They're gonna do some upgrades to landscaping and stormwater management. And um, I just wanted to point out as well that all of the structures that are currently existing and that will exist will be all in the office buffer district. Office buffer district. So with that, um, turn it over to not sure who's here for this either, actually. Mark Hafner is Stahl Schaefer here. Great, thank you. And I'm Matt Patterson, I'm the owner. Very good. 
Mark, Matt, or uh, Mark and uh, and Matt, either of you want to comment? I, I think Nicole covered it pretty well. I um, I will point out they yeah. all, all the structures. Uh, there, there's one structure that will be removed. There's a carport. It's the uh, the small box that's in the residential zoning district that's being removed. But otherwise, all these structures are, are remaining the same. Uh, the conversion to the of the single family family uh, residence to to an office space is all internal uh, modifications, no additions or revisions to the exterior of the building. Very good. Matt, as the owner, is there anything you wanted to share with us? Um, no, I think I think you guys have it pretty well covered. Uh, uh, this uh, is just something that I think will work out uh, nice and neat for for us. Talked a lot with Ken Soder and Doug Erickson about it to just try and keep it as simplistic as possible. Um, you know, we're just moving our office location closer to home. I live over uh, right off of 550 um, on Stony Point Drive there. So this will be our office for um, our uh, back office folks for our Jersey Mike's uh, locations. Very good. Um, how about uh, any uh, planning commission comments? So the appearance will stay pretty much the same with the exception of that one small carport coming out. That's correct. Correct. Okay. And then as far as any future expansion that would still have to come through planning commission later but by changing this, we're just it, it doesn't have any like long term ramifications as far as how much like more dense construction can go in there, correct? Correct. Yeah. Now we 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 talked to Matt. We said if you're going to do anything in the next five to ten years, you could include it now. But he he opted just to do the uh, what he has now. So if they do an expansion, uh, you know anything other than very very minor, we'll be back in front of the planning commission. Um, Okay, thank Anything you. Else, Ken? I think it was just this primarily a change in use from residential to office. So, okay. my recollection is you can't even see it from the road, anyways. Am I correct? It doesn't look like you can. You, you got to know where to look. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, Sharon, it, it will be, it's a, it'll, I don't know if we'll, driving by you will, no one will know. Okay. That, um, that, I guess that was the gist of my question. <laughs> Um, how about audience? Do we have anyone who's here tonight that wants to comment on Rocky Properties? Real quick, Brian, do we want to address Mr. Payne's comment? Thank you, thank you, thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Uh, Payne, uh, I, uh, I'm going to read his question. It oh, says, he's here now. Oh, oh perfect. Oh, hello. We'll oh, let you. You, you can Payne. go ahead since I forgot what I wrote. <laughs> 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 regarding staff comments, item four, regarding additional info details on lighting. Lighting plan sheet shows some lighting locations, but in but no info on lumens. Is there more details forthcoming? Mark or Matt, are you able to? The question is about lighting. So. We Matt can jump in if I misspeak, but there, there's no intention to change any of the existing lights. So uh, in order to satisfy the, the, the ordinance requirement, uh, Matt took lighting measurements within the parking lot, which I believe is what's regulated by the ordinance. I don't believe he took any readings up on the deck that, that measured the, the lights that are outside of, of the, the doors. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So Ken Soder and I had talked about that and, um, he had said that we needed a minimum of, uh, 0.2 foot candles. Um, I bought a, uh, a light, uh, foot candle meter and went out, uh, at night. And I think we were going to hit all of those, um, requirements without having to put up any light poles and stuff I'm trying to do as little, um, you know, uh, modifications as possible because there are residences close to there. I didn't want to make it like Yankee Stadium um, if we can avoid it. Um, you know, that's that's the intention. Thank you, Matt. Any other questions from the Planning Commission? Staff comments, questions?
If none, um, it looks like we need we need we need a motion. A motion that we approve it. Do we have a second? I'll second. All in favor, please say aye and raise your hand at the same time. Aye. Aye. Any no's? So moved. Motion passed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Mark. Go on. Item six. Penn Highlands Micro Hospital and Medical Office Building. Who wants to kick that? To who wants to get us started on that? I will. Thank you. Well, you're welcome. Penn Highlands Healthcare is proposing a three-story micro hospital and a two-story medical office building that will complete the build out in the Patton Town Center development located in the C2 uh, plan commercial. It's at the intersection of Waddle Road and Colonnade Boulevard. Um, this is a revision to a previously approved plan for that um, build out of that development. Um, and it will complete the 16.26 acre site um, where there's the existing cracker barrel and the sheets. Um, the construction activities for the site will not disrupt um, any of the utility service and um, will make sure that parking for cracker barrel will not be disrupted as well. Um, we do have a new traffic study for this. Um, and I want to mention that in addition to the discussion item that is listed about having the connection to the coal site, as it has been shown on previously approved plans, um, we are working through an issue with um, traffic for the traffic signals. Uh, so at this point, uh, we are not looking for a recommendation to the board, but we would like to discuss the plan. Um, so I think that's all I have for this. And I do believe Eric Kane, is that correct? Is with us? It can. That's Can, fine. excuse me, sorry. Okay, yeah, my name is Eric Can with Paul Baker Engineering, uh, the project manager. We're part of a team to uh, pull together this land development plan. As you guys heard it previously, Patton Town Center and uh, Penn Highlands is, they are excited to get this project kicked off and um, provide a, uh, you know, new opportunity in the area. Uh, we are proposing to, there are three lots that you can see on the screen there. They're the, um, the three rectangles. We are consolidating that into one lot for the new Penn Highlands Medical Office Building and Micro Hospital. So that is proposed and that will be recorded you know, once uh, everyone has an agreement on it. The existing site, those existing foundations will be removed. Uh, they cannot be reused as either retaining walls or with the new building. Probably not much of a surprise to everyone. The existing stormwater pond, we are able to utilize that. And much of the storm pipe system will be preserved as well. We had to grade. Um, much of the surface area to those existing inlets. Uh, as Nicole said, we are, uh, we are adding parking to the north side of the Cracker Barrel. You can see that on sheet eight of the plans. And um, I think that'll be, I think that'll be a little improvement to the parking for Cracker Barrel, and we're also adding a sidewalk along the western side of Cracker Barrel that would be closer to their entrance. The main parking for the hospital, you can see there at the center of the sheet, that will serve for, you know, like I said, the micro hospital and then the medical office building is, um, is towards the Coles area and that medical office building parking is to the south of the proposed building. Uh, there is a mechanical space to the structure that is uh, northern most part of that building. There is some outside cooling towers, the generator, uh, the dumpster refuse areas back in that area and a loading dock. 
the as the previous plan was approved and uh, part of it was constructed the service drive we're not proposing to change any any of those items the truck access will still enter and exit primarily stay on the service drive most most of the traffic i would think would come in the main access drive which will be uh, a new signal will be installed at that location that is to the uh, west of sheets and um, the new building will have a drop-off location and you can kind of see the loop structure there Uh, landscaping, Let me jump over to sheet 21. There's quite a bit of landscaping there. I think that'll be a nice visual for the site. Yeah, right there's the overall landscaping plan. There are uh, a few areas we have some benches and uh, like a pathway uh, just to the east of the hospital right in that area there's a kind of a walking trail with benches for people just to kind of mingle while they may wait and there's also just below the south of the medical office building there's a few other benches and then that feature island there there's some benches in there as well um, jumping over to the lighting plan on sheet 26 Much of the site, the existing light pool locations cannot be salvaged. I'm planning on totally um, just kind of a redo of the area we're affecting, and they will be LED fixtures. And the poles access, I can just, just discuss that for a minute. When the previous site was approved, it did have a retail component. And I would say having, you know, interconnectability between all these uh, facilities would make sense. But given that we have a, a hospital and a medical office building, we didn't think the Kohl's and the other stores to the West actually shared the use. We just didn't think it would be a good fit to have that traffic driving between the Coles parking lot and you know, potentially sheets and Cracker Barrel on the access drive that separates the medical office building and the parking designed for the medical office building. And um, we would just like for you to consider that. We're trying to just eliminate that excess traffic. We just don't think there's a, you know, they could just hop out onto Colonnade Boulevard and, and use the main entrance to the site to you know safely access sheets and cracker barrel. So it's going to use the exact same access as sheets and cracker barrel use presently. It's not coming out behind the sheets. Now we're we're going to utilize that same entrance. That's that main access drive that will provide or we will have a new signal. That's correct. And then okay. that right in, right out in front of Cracker Barrel, all those items are not being uh, modified in any way. Okay, because yeah, I would think that that you're going to have a lot of traffic right through there, so you need your own. Yeah, you know, Wooster did provide a traffic study. I could speak more to that. So, Eric, um, question: uh, Right now, it looks like the handicap parking is it. Um, I, I did notice that it, it's right in front of um there thank you so that's where all our handicap parking is and then what it what's the dark line that's going to the parking lot to the south is that is that just a walkway what is that uh could you shift okay can you zoom in or go to she what I'm trying to do, Planning Commission, is just really look into this deeper because we our goal kind of has, has, has historically been to, to connect things. 
so I want to take a moment and pause and really look at the logistics behind this. All right, so the logical, uh, Nicole, can you zoom out for just one second? If we, if this were to be connected, for those of us that, that were at the other, uh, familiar with the other um, building, which, so by the way, remember that was gonna be a medical building that had a parking deck below and that that was all interconnected and it connected um, kind of in the rear, of, I think in the rear of the property, but where this building is positioned, the only logical connection that I see would be, um, uh, would be, you know, what, maybe halfway in, if that, um, because the building is now there. So, so tell me a little bit further for the folks that are going to access the parking lot to the south. The foot traffic is that just a raised sidewalk? What what is that? Now that uh, can we zoom back into that, guys? Oh, before we zoom in though, do you see where we would connect it? So, uh, Nicole, can you put your hand where it would connect if we were to connect it? I think it would be further south where the we have access to here. It, if we were to connect these two parcels, where is the logical connection? It would be right south of the medical office building where we have access aisle D. Yeah. It goes from west to east. Right there, right? Correct. Guys, you see that? Yep. Okay. So that's the logical spot to connect it. My next question is, can we zoom into this and, uh, and explain to us how the pedestrian traffic really works to that, to that chunk of parking lot? Okay. Sorry, this thing is really touchy, so I'm try trying it's to make this good. as soon as possible. Nicole, if you, if you, yeah, that's okay. If you want to go to sheet 11, Let's see where I'm that would just be a blow up sheet. I'm just going to do it this way real quick. Is it sheet 11? Correct. Okay. Or Nicole, I, uh, I would suggest uh, bringing up Google Maps satellite view. It gives you actually a really good view of that corner where everything is logical. Or do, call, do whatever is easiest for you. Well, let me let me do sheet 11 first. No, I like that, but lingering question might be the answer. Hold on, almost. Let me try this and you guys can tell me what you think. Eric, how many employees will be in the hospital? Well, I didn't I didn't bring that information with me. Uh, uh hundreds, thousand? Oh, hundreds. Yeah, our parking count. Required parking is uh at 477 stalls, which includes sheets and cracker barrel. You need okay. to find what a micro hospital is. Yeah, are there going to be emergency vehicles accessing this like they do over at Mount Nittany Medical Center? Or is this more of a, a, a situation kind of like what Geisinger on Abigail Lane is? Yeah, we have, there, there will be ambulance service to this facility. There will, okay. Is there a Geisinger? I don't know, guys. Is there ambulance service there? I don't Geisinger, Geisinger there doesn't have an ER. No, no okay. I understand. So, so this is going to feel like a hospital with an okay. ER, right? Well, Eric, let's, Bill asked about the micro hospital. Can you just cover briefly what's in, what's all included in the micro hospital? Yeah, I, I'll probably have to turn that over to either David or Len, who was on the call. Okay. Yeah, let Len, I mean, do, do you want to take that or do you want me to take that? Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. Um, the, micro, the micro hospital will have um, 11 um, emergency exam rooms and a trauma room it'll have adjacent to it um, on the first floor a imaging uh, department that has a ct scanner two x-ray machines 
uh, currently a, a nuclear medicine and some, two ultrasound um, machines. <clears throat> on the on the lower level or the north side is where the surgical platform is, where we have three ORs in one procedure room. We have a central sterile processing area that takes care of all the dirty instruments, <clears throat> and we have five uh, phase one recovery beds and nine phase two recovery beds. And we're anticipating both inpatient and outpatient surgeries. The ground floor also has um, a loading dock facility and uh, our central plant, you know, mechanical rooms and building support functions. Also in the hospital on the second floor, we'll, uh, we're planning for 18 inpatient beds. For the MOB, that's that's a three-story hospital. Um, for the MOB, the, and the hospital is roughly 70, 74,000 square feet. Uh, the MOB only has two stories. So on the first level or the parking level, we have um, um, an outpatient um, uh, rehab therapy area. We have a blood draw in stat lab. We have women's imaging, cardiac, um, a cardiac clinic. We have a, a general pharmacy that feeds the um, hospital, but we also have a retail pharmacy, and that has a drive-through, um, uh, drive-through uh, pharmacy um, component to it. On the second floor of the MOB, we have our primary and specialty clinics. We have an oncology infusion. Uh -huh area and we also have um, our administrative functions on the second floor of the MOB. Okay. So I guess my question is, will emergency vehicles be accessing it? I guess I, I, I'm having trouble figuring out from the maps where they access. Like Great question. Hey, Sharon, I, I'm, I'm going to just make an assumption that the answer is going to be yes, and it's going to be on their main drive, um, which concerns me because it's going right through um, right through the parking lot to that area. Um, you know, having ha having been bounced around in the back of an ambulance going and doing CPR, I'm kind of concerned how this is linked up with the um, linked up with the parking lot. I, I've got actually just a lot more concerns and I would love more time to go over this one and, and get more sort of a presentation of what, what exactly is going on with with this. There, there's, there's a heck of a lot more questions that I have yeah. than I think that would be fair for um, fair for tonight since we have set so many other- Well, this, this, this is the opportunity to get the questions on the table. Yeah. So um, I think let's go back to Brian going to talk about pedestrian access let's go back and finish that and then move on to something else so guys historically i think as a commission we we go to great lengths to connect to have things connected um so in this case um you know uh, as much as i'm a proponent of things being connected um i, I wouldn't want to bottleneck a an ambulance for nonsense um and so can can i guess I, i'm trying to ascertain the pros and cons, where, where uh, do we connect it? At bare minimum, uh, at bare minimum, is there, Eric, is there a plan to connect this from a pedestrian standpoint? Is there a sidewalk to get to Kohl's? Because I'm, I'm concerned about the hundreds of people that work there that have a lunch break and want to run to Kohl's, pick something up, come back, et cetera. So is there a sidewalk connected? At this moment, there is not. I guess we just thought we were focusing on vehicular access, but I don't see why a sidewalk would be an issue to install. It'd be rather easy because you're right at the so. property line anyways. I agree with you. And then there's the sidewalk that goes from the Cata bus stop to the Coles parking. So we could link right up with that. Um, but can I, if, if, if I guess, if um, how does an ambulance access it? What, what what road would they take in here? Well, I would think they could use the main entrance. Is that what I'm looking at right now? Yeah, to the right, the very right there. That's yeah. our main entrance. That's your main entrance. So they come in, they're unimpeded to that location, and the parking 
they're all bordered by islands. So yeah, I mean, ambulances do need to, you know, drive well. And I guess the public needs to be aware of an ambulance and get out of their way. So commission, planning commission, if we were to connect it and we did so where we identified in the before, that just uh, takes the car and the ambulance at this next intersection. Brian, I think if you take a look at um, their wonderfully rendered uh, drawing, uh, what is it, it's, uh, at the end of the packet, uh, I think you'll see the, the concern that I'm starting to have with uh, where that ambulance bay uh, to the, um, right into all the uh, traffic of the uh, parking lot is. Last page, Bill. Last page. Is that one you're talking yeah, about? Yes, it's, it's it's after it's after the uh, it's after the um, it's after page thirty six of the Hall Baker. Am I the oh, only one that got these wonderful yeah. renderings? No, I'm just trying to get to it. So it's after thirty six. Okay. Yeah. It's the it's the aerial vi uh, vi uh, Oh, the video. aerial. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh. They're wonderful renderings. They are actually. <laughs> so Bill, what's your concerns about this beyond the, uh, we got to get some, we got to get moving on this. So speak to us now. Well, we've got two hospitals already, one without an ER. So we're just going to bring in another hospital with another ER and trauma room. Um, is this the right space for this? I mean, I, I understand no, that, uh, what is, is this going to fill our need? Is this going to fill hey, our need? Hey, our discussion, let, let's, That's let me back our up. discussion. I, I okay. agree with you, Doug. Yeah, mm -hmm. our, our discussion is not is if this site is right for a hospital. This site is zoned for a variety of uses. One of them is a hospital. It is the owner's prerogative to put the use here that they feel they see fit. Uh, they decided to put a hospital in here. All right, our, one of our main functions is to check this against the requirements of our zoning and subdivision regulations. Uh, there are certain issues that we can talk about. Um, the connection between lots is not precisely in our zoning, but it's been on a previous plan, so it can be talked about. We can talk about the uh, traffic issues. We'll do that a little bit later. Um, but the use is not an issue that's up for discussion. Um, that's already been decided by previous legislation of Patton Township said uh, hospitals are used by right in this zone. So that's not an issue for discussion. We can talk about some of the details. Uh, if we wanna, if we have issues about something, we can ask them as questions about why did you do such and such this way? Or if you have an alternative, you can put the alternative on the table and we can ask the applicant to discuss uh, what they provided in the alternative. Those are the ways I think we can uh, uh, fruitfully move this move this conversation forward. Okay, so guys, um, let's let's just stay focused for a minute on the connectivity veh vehicular. Um, what are our thoughts? I think personally, having being an emergency responder, I would rather see the. Um, ambulances go to the back of this micro hospital, but I know that would be cause much issues with all how they got their delivery trucks. Okay, uh, Bill, do you specifically have any uh, insight on vehicular connecting to Coles or anyone else on the planning commission? Jim, go ahead. I, I don't like butting in and talking over people, but uh... Regarding the ambulance bay, if you look at page eight, if they use the main entrance just to the west of Sheets, they come straight back in towards the micro hospital, hang a right hand turn and back into the ambulance bay. I don't see that as a problem. I thought that too, it seemed logical. Yeah, I agree. I'm concerned about traffic actually coming out of those uh, bays. What might actually be useful is just to uh, embank those uh, those three lines so that, that people can't drive into the ambulance or into the ambulance bay. 
Oh, so right. that loop on the back of the building, that's where the ambulance, that's where they're going to drop off? Front of the building. Oh, in the front of the building. Okay. Yeah. And what do you want to do with those bays? Um, I, I would just like to restrict the uh, re restrict traffic from those bays as much as possible. Oh, okay. Any, ex any extra traffic. So, I mean, uh, people coming out and heading uh, north, northwest, and turning as they head towards the hospital and suddenly turning out in front of an ambulance. Mm, okay. Got in it. those two lines. That that's that's kind of my main concern, but I know that it's it's a no, but I think that's a concern. You want to just make sure that the ambulances have a nice, clear, fast shot to the hospital without any other traffic, you know, people coming in and out of parking spots, um, yep. interrupting that. And now, then some sort of, uh, some sort of um, pedestrian discouragement to prevent people from, you know, walking in front of that. Yeah. Well, my, my concern, uh, Bill, based on your concern, is you know we we can't ignore the fact we got sheets a stone throw away. Mm -hmm. So how does sheets? How does how do all the people who jump off the exit who aren't familiar with that area? It's their first time pumping up with gas. How do they? Uh, how do they know? Kind of not to. I mean, is there? How do they know not to go in the direction of the hospital? Or, or, or can, is that an option? I, it is an option, correct? I think we should try to make it one because. Because, you know, I mean, she's some on a game weekend, she's is going to have a lot of traffic. Is the elephant in the room sheets in terms of pedestrians and people not knowing where they're going? I think the elephant in the room is going to be people, you know, really isn't going to be sheets or the animal hospital. I, mean, I think sheets is going to make a lot of money off of uh, off of lunch sales. Uh, you know, should this go? I, I think we just need to make sure that the, the traffic patterns are very, very clear for the ambulances themselves. The other cars can meander, you know, wherever, but just keep them off the the um, emergency quick route that the that the EMTs but, need to take. Sharon, is that possible? I mean, uh, it has. Well, that's what I I don't see looking at the map, but that Eric, doesn't mean it's not there. Why don't we Why don't we ask the applicant to weigh in and? That was my question. Eric, help us out. What, yeah. Uh, uh, I think, you know, as far as familiarity, I think the ambulance drivers, once they get familiar with this site, they'll know where to go and they'll know, they'll say the right in, right, in, the right in option actually works better for us. So they're going to utilize that. Or they'll use the signalized intersection. Now, obviously, they're going to use that to exit the site. Um, as far as restricting pedestrians access across the front of where the ambulance goes in, I mean, that's it's going to be very difficult to do. And I just think that, you know, they're just going to have to work together as they do at other hospitals. I mean, their ambulances do need to drive on common roads that everyone else does to get to the hospitals. And uh, okay. the site lays, lays out this way. And based on the internals in a building too, also encourage where those ambulance parking bays were located. I don't know if anyone else wants to chime in from our team, but uh, please do. Yeah, uh, yeah, yes, uh, yeah, Eric and everyone, this is David Nitschke from Core Architects. Um, so we're, we're partnering with uh, MCF Architects and uh, Leonard Van Heest, you had heard from him earlier. Uh, we explored uh, probably 17 different, hello? We can hear you. We can hear okay. you. Well, we explored 17 different options um, in placing the building and, and doing um, some preliminary master planning. Um, and we, we definitely did look at uh, and explore options to, to keep the ambulance traffic and the ED, the emergency department entrance um, on the lower level. Um, and as, as everyone's familiar with the site, and it is a challenging site having uh, the north end of the site be sitting 16 feet lower than the the main plaza level. Uh, so again, in all of our evaluations, um, there were uh, pros and cons that were weighed out. And uh, one of the biggest cons uh, we felt and, and our client agreed with placing 
the ED on the north end of the building on the lower part of the property, uh, even though it would, you know, isolate, it was better for isolating the ambulance traffic. But, uh, you know, not all traffic to the ED is going to be ambulance traffic. And, um, uh, you know, that really placed the ED on the back end of the building and made it much more challenging to, to find for uh, new ambulance drivers and especially for the public uh, in the event uh, of an emergency, having to um, find, you know, that, that department. Uh, and it was also the desire of our client, Penn Highlands Healthcare, uh, to create a, a concourse um, of entrances into uh, the main um, areas of the hospital. Uh, again, starting on the uh, the right side of the hospital, we have the ED entrance, we have the ambulance entrance, and we have the uh, entrance um, for the public. Uh, as you come around to the corner, uh, as you come around the concourse drive, uh, that uh, corner of the building is the, is the main entrance um, where the hospital and the MOB come together. And then you continue south uh, around that concourse drive um, to the uh, very south end of the building, the south end of the MOB, uh, where you have the MOB entrance. So, uh, yes, yeah, so, so we, we, we spent a lot of time, uh, did a lot of uh, evaluation, um, weighed the pros and cons, and felt that uh, this, this was uh, the, you know, the most appropriate placement um, for the uh, for the facility and, and for the uh, for the ED and the ambulance entrance. So the the ambulance bay is just uh, them leaving. It's not them dropping patients off, or is that where they're dropping patients off? That that is where they would be dropping patients off. Okay. I guess that's better than having an ambulance screaming all the way around Cracker Barrel going into the back of the hospital. <laughs> okay. I, I agree. This is this is one of those um, very difficult sites, and you know, congratulations for going. I, I by the way, I have to say, for the architects, I actually like the way this building looks. It's it's fabulous. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, but I'll, I'll say this, Brian. I'm not really concerned about uh, about uh, physicians or nurses going over to shop at Kohl's right now. Um, just with my wife being a physician, um, I know that uh, they don't leave their desk to go to lunch or to go shopping. So I, I, I don't think we need a- uh, Oh, you know, for the uh, interconnectivity? Yeah. And given that this site is so special um, in its uh, history and its um, layout, I think uh, sort of not going that way uh with this if if we feel that i mean if we feel we can get past all the traffic stuff um i agree you know ambulance have the right of way when their lights and sirens are going so you know hopefully people know not to step out in front of them but at the same time i've been in fire trucks where people didn't know not to step in front of the fire truck as i was screaming lights and sirens so um the, the, that's that's kind of why it, it's kind of why i i'd like to build in um was it mechanical controls whenever possible to try to restrict um, uh, vehicle person interactions with vehicles that are going faster than most people realize. Um, if we look at this block at an aerial, guys, you know, everything's connected at a different spot anyways. It's all connected in front of, uh, you know, Target, whatever's coming next, in front of Wegmans. <clears throat> this is, this the, the natural flow of the layout of this parcel isn't really conducive anyways. Um, so I think yeah. for me, it's a matter of, uh, I do think that needs to be at least put, there's no reason under the sun to not make this pedestrian uh, friendly. So it bare minimum, I think we need a sidewalk, but I'm almost inclined to think that that might be sufficient. Um, what are our other uh, thoughts on the Planning Commission. Anyone have a preference, uh, whether it's vehicular or sidewalk or not at all? I think a sidewalk would be satisfactory. I mean, you already have the sidewalk there and maybe they could put, I don't know what the rules are, but little, those little tiny stop signs, you know, for the people uh, on the sidewalk to stop and just to double check. 
And no. then, because um, there's not going to be a ton of sidewalk traffic down there, is there? Well, Sheets is there. Yeah. Um, so. Anything else, Sharon? Um, no, and I, I don't think I would like to, I don't want, I think it would be hazardous to have like any other paths or roads interconnecting through the back because I think that would just, I mean, this is this has to be a very well oiled machine as far as with as much traffic and emergencies and and trucks, you know, delivering supplies and things. So I, I, I would I would hate to see any other interconnectivity like on the back side of the property closer to the buildings. I, I think that that would be unwarranted. I think the sidewalk is all we should do as far as pedestrian traffic is concerned. Thank I agree you. with Sharon. Mr. Pang. You have yes, your hand on, up. Uh, I, I'm in favor of a sidewalk connection because even if the physicians and nurses might not go that way, if they have inpatient, outpatient surgeries and stuff, there may be family that's waiting around that, oh, you know, it'll be three hours before they're out of the operating room. So instead of only just having sheets and cracker barrel, they can wander wherever they want over towards Coles and Target and stuff. In agreement. That's a great point. We're foolish to ask Loris to put in a sidewalk and not, not address it here. Yeah. Um, anything else? Uh, so are we then in agreement, Planning Commission, that the sidewalk connectivity is sufficient? Yes. Yes. Very good. Is there anything, Planning Commission, that we want to talk about in addition to uh, anything we haven't discussed? Any other concerns? That's, I had a couple of minor ones. Please go ahead, Jim. How is the, you've got loading bays in the back end. How are semis going to go in and come out? Because to me, it looks like semis would be coming out at the intersection that does not have a signal. And I'm assuming you have planned on having them come in by Cracker Barrel and swing all the way around the back and back into the loading bays. Yeah, that, that is correct, Jim. Uh, on sheet eight, we do show our traffic patterns and the way the loading dock is set up, we do will have deliveries and they will utilize that service drive to exit onto Colonnade Boulevard, turning back towards Waddle Road. Okay, with at times there's a ton of traffic coming along Colonnade. So that my my only concern is there's no signal where they would be coming out, but trucks have a way of getting their rigs out into the street. <laughs> yeah, and I think there could be some off hour deliveries. Yeah. Pre preferably that would be the way to go, I think. So yeah. And we are we're just trying to utilize, you know, the site as it was given. And the outer service drive does have the heavy duty pavement. So we're just trying to. Uh, I, yeah. I have a quick question. When you pull out of there where the semi trucks are going, what's that bump out across the street on Colonnade? Is that a, is that a catabus stop? Yes, mm -hmm. it is. So uh, I guess the real question is, are these trucks pulling out of there going to encroach that other side of the road just to get out and get near the catabus stop folks? No, I do. There's sufficient space to get out there. Oh. I mean, they're they're pulling out almost into that far lane. All right. Yeah, I I don't think they're going to get into the Cata, you know, reserve space. Jim, does that answer your questions in terms of deliveries? Yes. You had next question about lighting. Yeah, it's maybe just a minor oversight or something, but at the top of the handicap parking. In between the handicapped parking and the micro hospital, you show a a fixture, but it's out in the macadam and not on the island. Yeah, that's something we need to clean up, Jim. Okay. What happened was we made a revision to that access aisle to accommodate the drop-off location. And that that light pole used to be or was planned to be in that island. We'll get it moved. Okay. Sounds good. Way to go, Jim. <laughs> good, good catch, actually. Thank you. 
Well, we can't require them to build a light post in a uh, in a driveway. It's hard on cars. <laughs> Jim, you had one more comment about do not enter. Yeah, same thing on the swinging around for your drop offs for the micro hospital and the medical office building. Okay. By the arrows, I assume that's a one way street. Yes, that is. Okay. Are you going to have do not enter signs and stuff at the exit there? Yes, we can add those. Okay. Plus, I know I know it's just a drawing, but your your stop line. Easy way to make it more <laughs> readily seen is to have that line go all the way across with big stop letters behind it. There, we we can do that as well. Overall, I think that's it for me. Anyone else on the planning commission? Next is audience. Do we have any uh, anybody that was uh, from the public that would like to make a comment? If not, then next would be staff. Any staff comments? Yeah, we've got one issue um, in the traffic study was completed and our engineers did a review. Uh, there's one issue that um, came up that's it's, it's a fairly significant one. It's, it's not a minor issue. So I think we need to just look at it and discuss it now. Um, Alex, do you want to go ahead and give some background on that? Sure. Um, I reviewed the traffic impact study along with Nick Schaefer from Trans Associates and um, the level of service um, with, so basically like the traffic flow through the new intersection proposed is lower than a township standard. Therefore, we were looking to see um, additional mitigation um, to the other intersections along Colonnade Boulevard. So in the letter, we had proposed for updates to the signal at Colonnade and Coles parking lot and also Colonnade Boulevard and Colonnade Way. So those were included in the comments. Um, and to date, I think we are still working on um, with Eric and the, and the developer regarding um, how we're going to how we're going to manage that. Yeah, this it would help coordinate. It would coordinate the signals through that corridor so we get a more even flow of traffic through there. Um, but to do that, we have to make improvements to the equipment at, at the other two intersections. Um, I think the estimate is 100 and what your estimate was 190,000 or along those lines. Or something 169. Yeah. In that neighborhood. So that's why I mean, it's not a, it's not a minor issue. Um, we, we were having some discussions today with Eric. We didn't get to a resolution on the issue. Um, what we could do, we could do a couple of different things. Uh, we could let it let it sit and bring the plan back in a month and see if it's resolved. To do that, we're going to have to have a time extension from the applicant because our deadline is May 2nd. Um, and so we'll need more time and the board would need time too. So that's one half. The other thing we could do is uh, approve this with that saying they're as a condition of approval uh, akin to uh, what you're going to do with the sidewalk connection to Coles. You say we're going to we're conditionally approve the plan with the uh, changes or the completion of the comments on the staff letter plus adding the sidewalk plus uh, mitigating the traffic issues uh, along colonnade by providing the coordinated system as detailed in staff comments. Uh, Planning Commission could do that. Uh, that would put them on the hook for the whole thing and then uh, they could argue with us about it. But uh, so I guess question back to Eric is, uh, is your client willing to provide us a time extension or do we need to do something tonight? In, the other options to recommend not approving the plan, but we don't like to do that. Yeah, um, I did talk to them about the delay and we we do think we can provide a time extension. 
We'd prefer a 30 day. Well, so I, I don't need a think we can. I need, we need a yes, we will, or no, we won't. Um, I'm, I'm confident, yes, we can okay. provide a time extension. Okay, well, so we'll make that a condition of the approval too, that uh, we will receive a time extension within 24 hours. Otherwise, uh, the plan will, you know, otherwise they won't commit, if they don't meet the conditions of approval, then it's the effect of not approving it, so. So Doug, uh, this proposed, if we choose to make a motion, it's contingent upon three things. Um, why don't you guys are going to think of a motion here pretty quick. Is well, let, let me say, let me back up. I think I might have confused myself and everybody. I mean, if they're going to provide us an extension, that's why I said we really need to. Um, I would say, you know, if, if you want to wait another month and bring it back in May, I would say let's do a motion to continue to review this uh, condition upon them providing us a time extension, which means if they don't provide the time extension, it's gonna to go to the board as a recommended not approval. Um, or if you're gonna to look to approve it, um, you could add the traffic mitigation as Alex and I described as a condition of approval, along with the sidewalk and the, uh, the receipt of the time extension so brian i i think i would uh venture to make that complicated notion that doug just just gave us the latter portion of it of that uh they can give us a time extension a written time extension within 24 hours of this hearing otherwise we will approve it with the conditions uh for the traffic studies uh by alex and staff and doug um doug you can work that up to be more, but the gist of it is, is that uh, they would uh, be on the hook for the uh, conditioned um, traffic yeah, changes. Say reference note 27 in the staff's re traffic review. Okay, reference note 27 in the staff's, uh, <laughs> in the staff. So that way, if um, they don't, they don't uh, deal with it in 24 hours, or they decide that they, you know what, fine, they'll, they'll pay for the uh, traffic. They, they've got that option and we actually have a new, we can get started on a new micro hospital. I, yeah. This is Eric, I'd like to jump in. I, I don't think that we wanna craft a, a motion to say that Penn Highlands would be on the hook if you don't receive a, you know, I, I, I've envisioned this to be a discussion on how we can get these improvements done you know, with Penn Highlands so they can understand what the cost may be. Well, we can continue that okay. between now and the board's review. Okay. We um, didn't, just, there was no met reference made as to who's paying for it in that motion. No, no, it's, it's, it, the, the implied is they'll pay for it. Very good. Oh, so Penn Highlands pays for the traffic study. Is that what you're saying? No, well, they pay for the traffic improvements. Of, improvements uh, required by note likes. 27. Oh, okay. Okay. And then. The other condition bill would be the sidewalk connection to poles or did you, you're not including that? Or I'm not including that, but Brian can do a soft amendment and I'll accept it. I, can I as the chair? <laughs> you, you, can, you can offer an amendment to Bill's motion. And I'm gonna offer can. an amendment to Bill's motion that we connect uh, the, uh, the project via sidewalk to Coles. I'll accept his amendment. Okay. Seconded. Yeah. All in favor, raise your hand and say aye. This is for aye. the amended motion. Aye. 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 Okay, and, Eric. So. And now do we need to do a, another vote for the, we do. So now this yes. next is for the original amendment. All in favor, say aye. 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 All, not in favor. Motion carried for both. Thank you. E Eric. Um, so this will actually go to the board agenda on the 14th. Okay. So if you can talk to your clients a little bit more about that traffic issue, maybe we can get that resolved. Okay. But uh, still do provide us the, the time extension. Okay, we'll do that here. I'll get it to you tomorrow morning. Okay, that'll be fine. Very good. Next item of business. Anyone want to, uh, Nicole, do you want to get us started yet again on the um, 
uh, add the fitness center to the industrial dis district zoning. We're on to item seven on the agenda. Okay, page thank you, everyone. Five. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. We're on page five of 12, item seven on the agenda. Mm -hmm. Add fitness center to industrial district zoning amendment request. You want me to do this or? Well, I was going to screen share, but my PDF went blank. So um, if somebody else wants to share the agenda item, feel free, because I don't know how long it's going to take to load back up on my computer. Can you have it, Alex, or um, I can pull it up. Um, let, me, let me do the intro here. We've oh, got, okay. Great. Uh, prospective client for a vacant building on Hawbaker Industrial Drive, a 118 Hawbaker Industrial Drive, uh, would like has asked the board and the township to consider amending our use regulations in the industrial zone to permit fitness centers. Uh, they are looking at doing a gymnastics academy, which would fit under that that definition of of fitness centers. Um, the board looked at it on March 24th. Uh, the board was. Uh, was in favor of adding the use. Uh, they did ask to see if the planning commission could expedite this. Uh, the uh, the tenant, uh, the use, the, the academy, uh, the, the gymnast academy would like to be in there this fall. Uh, it's probably gonna be a push still to get there, but we'll work on it as we can. Um, one of the issues, and Nicole provided quite a bit of background on um, special exceptions, conditional uses used by right. I would just say currently all the uses under the, that are listed under the I-1 zone are conditional uses. Uh, conditional uses mean that uh, a couple of different things. One, uh, a use may be appropriate at some places in a zoning district, but not every place. So that's one, one way where conditional uses will come into play. Uh, the other, a thing with conditional uses is that uh, the the planning commission the board of supervisors have an opportunity to apply additional conditions that may be uh, uh, may apply to the use in its particular place or depending on what the neighboring properties or anything like that might be just gives the township a little more uh, ability to craft a regulations uh, specific to the use and the type of use and location for for a certain zone or certain uses. Uh, the industrial district's the only place that we make extensive use of conditional uses in Patton Township. The other, uh, the other place we use conditional uses a lot is for churches. Um, there are, uh, I'll give you an example of a conditional use where somebody wanted to put a big church out in the rural area of Patton Township. When I mean big, they wanted to a church that was going to have a parking lot that for five or 600 cars. Um, after we looked at it, we just said, no, that's not an appropriate place to put a church that big because we can't get the traffic in and out there for, for, you know, a use that big. So that's, that's an example of where, uh, you know, that church might've been fine along Atherton street, but it's not fine uh, a mile and a half off of Atherton street. So uh, with that, so the questions are basically, um, is this use fitness center appropriate for, this, for the I-1 zoning district? And then uh, should it be uh, a use by right of conditional use or a special exception, uh, noting that most, at everything else in the I-1 zone, a uh, conditional use. Uh, Nicole, I think you might have some more information about um, industrial uses in uh, college in Ferguson Township and some of our other municipalities. Yeah, I attached a sheet that kind of broke down the different uses of the those municipalities. And then I also wanted to mention, uh, do you want me to talk about what College Township Council had to say about it at their meeting at this point, or do we want to wait on that? Go ahead. Uh, Go ahead. So I attended, well, yeah, okay. Um, College Township Council meeting uh, Thursday, April 1st, um, because we share industrial uses through our inter-municipal agreement with College Township. 
Um, so they, um, they're they in favor of it. They're okay with us uh, making this change should we desire to do so. They did have a comment about infrastructure for these types of uses like a fitness center that typically um, the industrial districts don't have things like lighting and sidewalks and stuff that would be compatible with this type of use. So that is something we might want to consider when we're talking about this, that um, the industrial district may not require sidewalks and lighting and things like that for things that are used 24 seven and on the weekends and at different hours of the day than, than the standard industrial uses. And then um, I don't know if anyone has any other questions about some of the things I attached. I think Doug went over the conditional use stuff pretty well. Uh, we have with us uh, representatives of the owners, David Gaines and Evan Myers, I think at this point, ask them if they'd like to, ask them to. Uh, Attorney Gaines, do you uh, want, to, want to introduce yourself and, and speak on behalf of your client? Yes, I'm happy to do so. Thank you to everyone for having us here and, and taking time out of your otherwise busy agenda uh, to hear from us. I'm here with Evan Myers. Evan Myers is a property representative and a representative of Phoenix Academy, which we've been calling it for short. Uh, we've reviewed everything that Doug and uh, Nicole and their staff have uh, provided in response to the request. And we uh, generally, I, I don't see anything that disagrees. I, I, so far, this has been a collaborative process, uh, by no means adversarial. And we look forward to continuing to work with the township. Uh, I will echo what Doug said, which is that the supervisors, my strong impression was that the supervisors were in favor of this and they did ask for this to be expedited. I know every property owner that comes before this board on some level asks for things to be expedited. Uh, but in this case, uh, there's, a, there's a school year issue that we're really trying to proceed with among other concerns. So that is the basis for uh, the, the, the request for expediting to the extent possible. I just look, I did not know to be honest about the college township discussion. I, uh, in addition to work, <laughs> being an attorney in this area, I enjoy going to autos and non COVID times, uh, unfortunately. <laughs> I, I, I believe oh. based on, <laughs> I think there are sidewalks and lighting in that area, uh, oddly enough, even though I do recognize that that's somewhat atypical for an industrial zone. Google Maps, the, the street view is telling me that there is. Um, there is on Hall Baker, right, Ken? We have we have sidewalks going up and down Hall Baker. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there, there are sidewalks along Hall Baker Industrial Drive. I don't know how adequate, you know, we have internal sidewalks within this site for the parking facilities or anything. I think it's just one big open parking field. Uh, so that might be something that we'll wind up looking into. Do that with the land development plan though. Correct. And we can address the lighting at the, a later date. Yeah. It probably will be insufficient. I. I'm sorry, the lighting for the sidewalks will be insufficient or for the parking lot? I, I, I'm just guessing from the parking lot standpoint, but I don't know. If I, um, maybe I could uh, chime in. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Evan Myers. And nice to see some of you uh, who I may know already. Um, I believe that there is a parking lot lighting there. That um, facility was a combination uh, warehouse and showroom. That's where Whitehill had their actual retail store. And uh, their business hours, uh, certainly uh, in the winter, extended well past the time it got dark. And so I believe that there's lighting there. But uh, obviously, that's something we'll have to be taking a look at. And I also believe there's sidewalk, as you can see, around the uh, property um, as well, uh, around the, the building itself. So. Um, on the on the two sides where you can you can enter, but obviously if that's something that we need to look at, we will. Um, so I, I thought I could address that. I have a couple other comments that I could make if you want me to do that now, or if you have any yeah. questions. Hey. Go ahead. Okay. Th thanks. Um, 
as uh, as David said, uh, certainly I uh, appreciate the chance to to talk to you. I guess it's evening now. Afternoon has gone into evening. So um, I, I I just think that this uh, this is a this is a win for everybody. It's a positive economic impact for Patton Township. Uh, parents will be able to drop kids off and then go to autos or shopping at Wegmans or any of those other places nearby. Uh, there'll be adult programs. And so the adults will be able to go to some of those uh, uh, those places. Uh, there'll be other gatherings. Uh, I think it's a positive overall impact for the community, uh, provides recreation and an outlet for children and, and also adults to uh, to, to do this, this sort of thing. One of the programs that we're going to be doing, uh, we're going to be doing traditional gymnastics, dance, and circus arts. And it's kind of interesting because I want to draw your attention to that because Cirque du Soleil type entertainment has become, you know, pretty, uh, pretty mainstream, pretty big across the country now, but there's very few places that actually teach it. And this will become one of those places. So uh, that'll be kind of a destination. Um, I, I do want to level with you that um, this is really the ideal location for us right off the I-99 interchange. It's easy for people to get back and forth. Shouldn't cause congestion because you can get off and on right there. Uh, the, the thing is we need to be operating, as someone mentioned, um, up and running by the beginning of the school year. That's often when uh, people start thinking about uh, these kinds of programs to enroll their children in or getting involved in themselves. And it's going to take a bit of time to do some things with the building. The one good thing about the building is that only um, some minor modifications will have to be made in order to get this running because the main area is, is an open space right now. So uh, that's something that won't take a lot of time. Um, this whole thing is a bit of turning the tables for me personally. Uh, I served as the chair of the State College Planning Commission for six years. I've been on State College Borough Council for the last seven and a half. I'm respectful of this process. Um, I've experienced it from your side. Um, but my main ask, I guess, <clears throat> is the thing that uh, the, the council heard as well, supervisors did, that time is of the essence. It's very important for us to get this thing moving in the proper way, but we need to get ourselves in a position so that we can be operating by the end of the summer. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Attorney Gaines, did you have any more comments? Uh, we are primarily here to answer any questions and address any issues that you might have, so we'll be happy to do so. Planning Commission members, any questions, comments? Go ahead, Rich. I see you have your hand up. So uh, I'm for this. Uh, I'm for this because of the fact that uh, with the loss of the facility on the other side of town, uh, you know, uh, being uh, in contact with people who would use this facility, I think it's common sense. I think it keeps students from having to travel outside the area uh, to uh, seek this activity, and um, uh, and in some conversations with students uh there's definitely a need uh for something in this area so i'm just going to go on the record to say that uh i would be for this thank you rich jim go ahead muds i'm pretty much all for this my only concern is parking depending on what you do as far as if you have competitions or if you have a a night where all your groups show off for their parents and families and stuff. What about parking for staff? The question would be how many parking places would be required for something like this? Great question. Ken, it's, I mean, it's going to be based on the square footage of the structure that they're using and what it's being used for. Um, most definitely, I, I think that does, you know, raises a question for us to look into um, if they do intend to have special events and so forth, what type of special events, what, you know, number of individuals are they looking at? Uh, because this is something that, you know, we'll have to evaluate and determine uh, our parking calculations might not actually include something that would 
cover this well enough to be able to make sure we have the right number of parking stalls in place. Uh, that's something we need to review and take a look at. Ken, uh, go ahead. Yes. Uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. And as Richard said, if there was a facility similar to this on the other side of town, uh, that would be some good information to bring with them whenever they come with a land development plan for staff to review so that we have some background. Um, if, you know, potentially we think they need more parking than what they have and they have information that shows that they don't feel they need that. That's going to be a point we're going to have to review. Question for you, Ken. Um, Paul Baker Drive, is that, that's a wide road. Is there, are we allowed street parking on that? There is a lower section, I believe we have signed. I think we have, we have no parking on one side. Yeah. I've and never seen anyone park on that, Paul yeah, Baker. Oh, it goes oh, back to when autos opened. Yep. <laughs> yep. It's mostly mostly their employees, so. And and Ken uh, and uh, Doug, why only one side? Was it? Is it? Is that street wide enough to have parking on both sides? No, no. That's why we, when autos opened, they were very popular. People were parking on both sides, and it was you couldn't get through there. So we instituted parking just on one side it's on the uh, the auto side of the street and uh, and doug now that the hotel and the the area in the front is developed do people still park on uh hall baker for auto overflow um i think some of their employees may well i couldn't tell you in the last year because but i they were still having their employees were parking out there prior to COVID, so there'd be more spots for um, for customers. The, yeah, the two, uh, the two restaurants are co-owned, but the, uh, the, um, the hotel is separately owned, so they do not share parking with the hotel and the restaurants. But the truth is we have a lot of road frontage between autos and all the way up, including the cul-de-sac. Cul if one were to, have an yeah. event for overflow. No, there, yeah, there's a lot, but it's not unlimited either. So, I mean, it, it, we'll have to have the discussion and that may be a, a question, you know, is, is on-street parking appropriate? Typically, you know, again, that's one of our issues in Patton Township. Uh, we used to think when we thought we ourselves were fully uh, suburbanites, we insisted that everybody have their own off-street parking. Uh, now, with some other uses, we're you know we are transitioning more towards an urban type of environment, and so on-street parking for this use may or may not be you know a question that we can we can consider as part of land development plan. Thank you. Any more comments from the planning commission before we see if there's any public comments? I have a question. So. And this pertains like traffic seems to be my theme of the meeting here today. But when we further down the road, when we um, voted what last month or the month before to um, change from industrial use to commercial, wasn't traffic an issue there? And this is just up the road, just a tad, right? Yeah, I think the issue with the traffic there that I brought up was actually specifically to uh, the traffic coming on to that turn signal and turning and getting congested right there. Um, I, I know of the people that park uh, near autos. Um, I, as Mr. Gaines and I are both attorneys, we both like to frequent autos after a hard case. Um, but yes, um, I, I guess my next question is, is uh, Doug, what do you need from us? Is this just saying, hey, yes, fitness places can be, industri uh, can be uh, put industrial use, or are we actually ruling on this particular uh, we can do a motion. The planning commission could make a recommendation back to the board tonight if you feel you have enough information. Before we go there, Rich, you had your hand up. So I was just going to say, um, you know, in uh, response to what Jim said, um, knowing that we had something similar on the other side of town, I would just be curious as to 
how many events do these facilities have in a given month, week, year that would require this amount of, you know, parking or overflow potentially of cars and vehicles? If if I could um, try to take, if I could try to take that, so uh, the uh, facility you're talking about is Nittany Gymnastics, where the folks, some of the folks involved in this um, venture worked at. Uh, that parking lot is smaller than this parking lot. Now this facility is a little bit bigger than that facility, um, but the parking lot is bigger, and obviously we'd have to go through the proper. Um, assertion of the of the of the spaces but we but looking at the lot from above and driving through it it appears that there's a opportunity to put another row of spaces in the middle um but it's a bigger parking lot how often would would uh there be um competitions things like that um not that often uh we're talking about maybe uh once a month at the most i think that um during that time period the parking lot itself and perhaps if the street was available would would should be sufficient uh just because of the size of the facility we're not talking about um a jordan center type of a, a situation there's only so much that you can fit in a facility of that size any uh uh, uh mr myers I, it, when you look at aerial it, the the, the facility has, you've got entertainment for parents, you have the hotel down the street. So I think as a community, we get a lot of extra perks with, with this existing. Um, uh, any other comments from the Planning Commission before we see if there are any public comments? Any public comments? Very good. Does anyone want to make a motion? I move we approve the Phoenix Academy. Hey, why don't we make the motion of move to recommend adding the fitness centers to the uh, I-1 district as oh, a community. Yeah. How's that sound? That's better. Very I'll good. That motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. Sharon, second. All in favor, say aye. Raise your hand, please. Aye. 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 Any nays? So moved. Thank you very much. Appreciate your time. Thank you for your patience. Thank you. Absolutely. Have a pleasant evening, everyone. Same to you. All right. We are on to item eight, and that is the rezoning request for Douglas Drive, lots 474 and 480. Um, does anyone from the township want to, want to tee us up? Why don't you go ahead, Nicole? Alrighty. So we have somebody uh, who is in the, who is a partner in the ownership group, uh, for these properties who has submitted a request to change the zoning, uh, from the low density residence district or R2 to general commercial or C1. Uh, they did talk to the board about this at the uh, March 10th meeting, and the board would like us to look at that tonight. Um, they would also like us to consider if there are other zoning districts that might be more appropriate to rezone these properties as opposed to the requested commercial. And I'm not sure, I don't imagine anyone was on the Planning Commission in 2006, but this was requested back in 2006. Um, they were asked to rezone these properties in the same manner. And at the time, um, the planning or the decision was to not rezone them that way, which is why they're here now. Uh, so attached with the meeting, or excuse me, with the agenda materials is that 2006 report that was created, as well as the minutes from the meeting from 2006. And I just wanted to point out that I did compare the CRPA's 2006 report to the now updated comprehensive plan because it has been updated since that report was generated. But a lot of the underlying themes and objectives and goals that were cited in that 2006 report remain true to the current comprehensive plan. And um, there's a link to the plan in the agenda materials, as well as the attached uh, future land use map for Patton Township. Um, is there anything else? 
uh, comments. We did receive comments from the public uh, through emails. So the comments that were attached with the agenda were ones that we had received as of March 31st and anything received after that uh, was emailed to the planning commission when it was received. So planning commission members, I hope you've had a chance to view the new comments that have come in that um, Alex so graciously put into PDFs for you. And with that, I don't know, Doug, is there anything I'm missing? So, oh, um, we can re we can bounce back if uh, Doug wants to weigh in. Um, uh, for public comments, uh, Mr. Hallbaker, did you want to? Uh, you have the floor. Is there anything you would like to comment on? Uh, yes, thank you. Um, um, I um, uh, many of you may or may not know my. Uh, Father uh, J. Alvin Hallbaker was the developer of Park Forest Village uh, starting in the 1950s before there was any zoning in Patton Township. Um, he never really intended on uh, putting any housing on Atherton Street, a uh, busy uh, uh, commercial uh, uh, commuter route uh, uh, or primary route actually to State College. Um, when the zoning was put in, for some reason, the one section of um, between Douglas Drive and uh, Gainer G uh, Galen Drive uh, received a R2 uh, zoning single family residences. Um, I think we have thought from the get go that that was the wrong use for uh, for those properties. Um, currently, uh, two of the three of those properties are currently privately owned, um, and the balance is actually owned by the township, um, which I, has, I assume, no plan in developing uh, the, their portion of that. Um, we have the, uh, of course, the uh, the church up on top of the hill on Galen Drive, which uses it for a parking facility, which is an incumbent. Uh, an, accessory use. Um, we have the uh, corner lot uh, at, at Douglas Drive, which was one lot. And when we lost uh, the uh, rezone uh, in 2000, uh, the first rezoning, uh, we uh, subdivided it and put two mobile homes on it just as a temporary use. Um, so that we could pay our taxes and pay the maintenance on the property and, and have some uh, legitimate use for it. Um, I, I guess my real goal here is to hopefully get the township uh, uh, planning commission to see that this is not a proper use uh, for, for that, uh, that land. Uh, I did uh, make a quick email this morning to uh, my neighbor, uh, who is uh, Scott Yoakum, and he replied that uh, uh, he certainly supports our uh, bid to uh, change to a uh, uh, another zone. Um, I suggested C1 uh, just because uh, the size of the lot seems to be appropriate and consistent with a highway frontage uh, property. Um, I, I don't know what kind of objections you've got from the neighbors, but you know, anytime there's a change of use, I'm sure you're going to get objections, uh, whether they're merited or not. Um, when I made my presentation to the, uh, uh, the board, uh, one of the um, council members uh, was suggesting that uh, it was a good location for uh, workforce housing um, and, and pointed out that the current tenants in there uh, have children and, and have playthings strewn about the yard. Um, that may be, but um, again, uh, would you want your children or your grandchildren out there playing uh, with the noise of the highway and the congestion and uh, uh, everything that goes with highway frontage. Uh, I, I don't think that that's appropriate. 
um, you know, if, if, if it is a small lot and uh, it's only a half an acre lot. Uh, and when I combine the two lots together again, um, and, and with the setbacks that are required for that zone, uh, I'm not going to get much of a building on that in any case, and probably not very much parking either. Uh, it is also a corner lot, and I'm not sure how your regulations uh, work with a corner lot. Um, you know, if a, is that 70 foot uh, front yard setback going to apply to uh, both Douglas Drive and Atherton Street? Uh, my other limiting uh, factor there is that uh, uh, the back lot line is follows a drainage ditch, so I can't get over too far and uh, uh, with any kind of a uh, building on that. I see a plan on there now. Is that uh, what my setbacks might be to uh, put something on the lot? Uh, is that Doug? Do you see that or? Yeah, I'm not, I didn't do this, so. Okay, I, it's first I saw it. Can. Yeah, I, I wouldn't think that, uh, <clears throat> you know, because since this property does front two roads, um, Patton Township normally assesses a front yard setback adjacent to roadways. So that would cut into the property fairly large. Uh, that potentially could be an issue where you know, if the property were rezoned and you wanted to develop it, um, I don't know if it would be something that would need to go to the zoning hearing board for them to review that or not. If the if it would be too onerous to be able to develop the property under those parameters or not. Okay, well, that's that's certainly down the road. Uh, whether there's time for that, and I have not consulted with any uh, professional staff uh, to see what what's going to happen, but. Uh, again, I, I would foresee if it was changed to the, the C1 zone, uh, that it was going to be a small, uh, maybe an office building or, uh, you know, it could be something like an insurance office or maybe a bicycle repair shop. Uh, you know, I mean, the township is big on uh, bicycle use, um, could be a bagel shop or donut shop, uh, a hairdresser or a uh, 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 even a pet grooming uh, place would uh, probably fit on that. Um, I don't suspect that I'm going to get like a Taco Bell or a uh, Chick-fil-A that's going to have a high volume uh, in and out. It just, it just isn't going to fly, I don't think. So uh, again, this is my uh, appeal to, uh, to the Planning Commission that uh, I think it's uh, you know, a better use of that property than than residential. Um, the the uh, I, I did uh, contact a, a couple of people since uh, the meeting. I called the State College Land Trust, uh, Center County Land Trust, um, and neither of those uh, would be interested in uh, workforce housing. Um, you know, it just, it's just it's just not a good place for for a family to be. Thank you, Mr. Hallbaker. Any other uh, uh, comments, Mr. Hallbaker, before we take other people who who would like to weigh in? I, I think that's enough of an introduction. Thank you. Um, so I have a couple other uh, uh, names here that are not familiar. Zach Larson, are you? Can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can. Are you uh, uh, on Zoom to comment on the rezoning, perhaps? Uh, yeah, I wouldn't mind. I'd like to comment on that. And thank you for your time and allowing me to comment on that. Please do. Go ahead. Um, uh, hearing the proposal, and really, I, I am very understanding of this proposal. Um, the thing I wanted to bring to the attention as I was going through the some of the um, older material in the minutes, um, I know this was mentioned, but really want to emphasize this. Um, as someone who lives in Park Forest, and I live on Oak Lane, um, I use the Douglas entrance quite a bit. Um, and it's a really, in my opinion, a really dangerous intersection. Um, my wife and I have had multiple um, close calls where we get a green light on Douglas to proceed on Atherton and have someone come through that intersection 
at or above the speed limit, um, just clearly not noting, you know, that, that they had a red light. And, and really in the morning, it's probably made worse by the fact the sun is directly in your eyes when you're, when you're going down Atherton Street. Um, so I, I had just when I saw this, and, and, this, and this was kind of noted uh, just previously about some of the uses, um, but because of that, I, I was really wanting to note that I think there can be a lot of issues getting in and out of there and having, say, access to, um, to Douglas from that lot. Now, in addition to the getting out being a problem, if you try to get into Douglas, um, that is a turn you make rather quickly. Um, when you're coming down Atherton from Wegmans and you're crossing traffic, you scoot into Douglas rather quickly, generally to avoid traffic or hit a gap on Atherton because of the speed of the cars coming down that hill. Um, so I would have concern if there is an entrance on Douglas you know, if someone's pulling out and, and they get stuck because they're behind the traffic and they're blocking the lane or they're quite just not paying attention, they pull out rather quickly. I could see um, some concern for some, uh, you know, accidents with, with an entrance onto Douglas um, because you're getting in and out of, of, you know, off of Atherton so quickly. So that was the big concern I had. I think it was well noted that, um, and I don't know what your ability of a board is to, to deal with the traffic in that business. And it's right that a, a small office building, um, something that is low volume probably would make a lot of, di a lot of difference. You know, this, the, I don't think with the, the speed of traffic coming down Atherton that you can have another Starbucks or a Chick-fil-A there. Um, and I don't know, I, I guess the question is, if this is rezoned, what abilities do you have as a board to ensure that the traffic, um, the volume of traffic can be controlled and then if so what is what is the potential access in and out all good questions which we don't have answers for at this moment uh, okay. but uh i appreciate your concerns any uh uh, uh we also have uh looks a, a lois um did you want to comment Does anyone else from the public want to comment on Douglas Drive? If so, please unmute yourself and do so. Introduce your name and your address. Uh, for the record, we did have a lot of emails, uh, uh, Sam, uh, Mr. Hallbecker, that came in in the last few days on this. Um, so as the uh, we, we won't take the time to read all those emails, but uh, the Planning Commission has been receiving them ongoing up until the start, uh, before the start of the meeting. Um, we'll send you copies of those, Sam. Yeah. Nicole, can you do Thank that you. tomorrow morning? Planning Commission. Um, anyone uh, have any thoughts, comments? So it is, it is R2 right now, currently. Is that correct? Yes, Sharon. So that whole area is R, R1, R, R2. It's R2? Go ahead, Mr. Payne. Thank you. I found it very interesting reading the, the minutes and stuff and all the comments from the 2006 go around. And as Nicole said, center region planning view of things have not changed since 2006. So in my mind, it should stay residential because granting C1 a developer can say, well, I want to put a small office building in there, but then once they have the C1 status, they can do whatever they want as long as it fits into C1 ordinance. So I'm against it. I think I concur. Darren, go ahead. Yeah, we just, I mean, we just put in a commercial one across the road from it, but this one doesn't have, you know, this one, this particular lot, or it, it won't have the same kind of, um, like there's no, 
I don't know. I, I just, I, I think traffic wise, it wouldn't be wise. And with all the setbacks, I mean, why change? There's not going to be anything that they would be able to put up that would be aesthetically pleasing. I don't think, you know, as far as, cause they'd have to go tall. They, they wouldn't be able, cause they only have so much square footage that they can do with all the setbacks and everything. And I don't know if people would want that in their backyards. I, I just don't see a need for it at this point. Um, Sharon, on that note, this afternoon, I, I drove on Hallbaker Drive just to get a sense of, of the vacancies. Um, and you guys know, uh, everybody knows where Best Line Equipment is. Across, right. across that um, uh, cul-de-sac there is Site One, and they're a landscaping business. Um, and that's where Nittany Gymnastics used to be. Um, but in that whole complex, um, so there's, there's two buildings there. One of them is, is just a portion of it's being occupied by Site One, uh, just for a little bit of extra storage space. Um, there we are. So if we go back to the cul-de-sac or go to the uh, cul-de-sac and go to the left, there are two buildings that look like they have purple roofs. Um, the, the building furthest, the smaller of the two is, uh, there's just someone in there temporarily. And then the building where site one is, it is, is also uh, not fully occupied. And then when you turn around and you come back, that is where Whitehall Lighting is. Um, that applicant has said that that building has been vacant for over a year. Then we have across the street, another vacant building on top of that, we have on North Atherton Street, we now have, uh, it's, it's at the corner of Martin, and this is in Ferguson, but we've got uh, where Nittany Bank, which is now BB&T, that's an empty bank. Um, I feel like we have another bank. Oh, uh, M&T Bank is empty. Um, so I'm, I'm of the opinion that a, a more commercial space in terms of what the township needs it, it seems that the R1 is the two people that live in those trailers are, are, are perhaps the best use at this present time. I'm also concerned about the buffer um, for the folks that have bought on, uh, on, on Hillside and Douglas um, and North Oak, uh, that, that those neighborhoods, you know, they, they made the decisions to buy there on R1 um because they probably prefer not to have the commercial quite so close to them yeah i agree i'm not in favor of it but i may it looks like sharon you are not um others on the planning commission can you weigh in so you know i'm concerned about the traffic i live close to there i go on there constantly and uh i will second the, the comments that were said earlier that is that is a unsafe area um i don't know the history from the 50s and 60s how that property got the intent of what it wasn't meant to be um having said all of that you know i'm because of all the vacant uh commercial properties that we currently have in this township i just and not dead set on, you know, also coming out of a COVID pandemic for the last year, you know, how that's the best use of that space. So uh, I'm not in favor of this. Uh, I, I, I agree. I agree. I think this proposal is maybe just a little ahead of its time. It, in my mind, it would make more sense in a few years if it included the properties to the north and had ingress and egress off of Atherton only. Um, Cause then you could maybe work with the traffic signals and, and no access at all off of Douglas. But um, it, at this time, I just don't think it's the right time. Mr. Bennett, do you have any comments? Uh, you know, I would be open in the future if we were talking more of a uh, sort of a, a very, very, very light commercial. But even as I was looking at this, I know that intersection 
I, I mean, in this particular piece of property, I, I'd find it very hard to, you know, okay, anything. One, because again, when people bought there, you know, they're, it's not like they were buying right next to a commercial uh, in the start. But second, you know, I, I'm, I'm looking at that. Let's say we, let's say we required him to, you know, completely redo the intersection of Douglas Drive. So that was very similar to the Hall Baker Industrial Drive with all the same setbacks. Suddenly he's got no room to build anything there. So, you know, I, yeah, I mean, if, if there was more property to do something, um, you know, I, I could see it, but yeah, I think the best use right now is to, um, is the, the, the two families that are living there or the ability for two families to live there. Uh, and I know that they're trailers, but we don't have a lot of, um, we don't have a lot of workforce housing um, in the area. So. What is workforce know, housing? I, I'm, I don't know what that is. It's a nice term for low income. Oh, um, okay. thank you, Bill. Uh, before I answer your question, or before I go to you, Jim, uh, Bob, did you have any comments? Oh, I'm not in favor of throwing people out of their houses, especially in view of all of the empty buildings that are there. So I am not in favor of this. Very good. And Mr. Payne, go ahead. You have your hand up. Yeah, on the materials that were given out, on the one she said we should also be considering the other three parcels that were put up or requested for commercial in 2006. And to Harry's comment about if it had more acreage, the the largest parcel is the, I think it's Yoakum, Yoakum parcel, which is very steep. What they gave out in the materials, it was an average of 17% and up to 20% slope so that's that's not too good for coming off atherton and driving into <laughs> into there because you you got downhill lot you'd have to stair step the whole lot coming down so i don't think any of them are good for commercial thank you well uh planning commission uh, and uh mr hallbaker it looks like at this point uh there's not a support from the planning commission to change the zoning. Um, and I think that uh, uh, the board asking us to explore other options, guys, we, let's take a moment. Is there any other options other than residential that we would like to take back to the board as a suggestion? None here. I mean, could he, so like what we did on number five, on item number five on Rocky properties today and just um, expanded the use. I mean, could he apply for that if he wanted to, but keeping it residential and R2 zoning? No, Doug, you can confirm that. Correct, yeah, no, there's, um, I mean, the board suggested looking at office buffer, which would permit office uses and I don't know, you could do probably do a small office building there. Is there anything else in office buffer, Ken, that would, or is it primarily just office? Yeah, mostly offices. It doesn't really permit much for retail at all in the mm -hmm. office buffer district. Uh, if there is a retail component, it would be associated with the office. Like if it were an optometrist, they could be selling eyeglasses and sunglasses and so forth because that's associated with the business. But, okay. uh, the, the thing, if you would look at office buffer, uh, it would more than likely require that multiple parcels be put together uh, because of the frontage requirement within the district. Uh, mm -hmm. So multiple parcels would have to be put together and then they would more than likely have to determine how they could access uh, on to Atherton and so it would be a, a multi-step process for something like that to come to any kind of, uh, you know, final plan. Okay. okay. So I guess that nixes that idea. So 
then then I'm in favor of just keeping it uh, as residential then. Any other thoughts from the Planning Commission before we move on to the next item? Well, if you're going to make a recommendation, let's do it by a motion and second to make a recommendation back to the board, if you would, please. I motion that we keep it residential. Second. Second it. All in favor, please uh, say aye. Raise your hand. Aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you, Mr. Hallbaker. Next, do we have a uh, uh, status on pending items, please? Yes, yeah, so oh, Grace Woods Planning Community Minor Amendment was approved. The Morosky subdivision was approved. The 101 Hot Baker Industrial Drive rezoning, uh, the public hearing will be scheduled for April 28th. So there's an update that it's not in the agenda as well as the Saldo minor amendment will have a public hearing on that same day on April 28th. And I believe the Barger Field subdivision plan, the board did not take action on that and it will return on April 14th. Yeah. Um, um, and for the Nicole, work. Nicole on the 101 Hawbaker. Yeah. Tell yeah. the board or the planning commission about the college townships recommendation. Oh yeah, sorry. Um, at their meeting last week, the College Township Council was in favor of the rezoning. So where we don't have to wait the 90 days for them to comment because they have already given their opinion. Thanks. Sure. Um, for the pending work session task, the sign ordinance, we're not going to talk about that at the moment. Uh, the solicitor is going to review it. And once we get it back from the solicitor, and spend some time looking at it and discussing some of the recommendations and potential changes that uh, she recommends at that point in time. And then we haven't started the bicycle parking yet. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Other reports, Patton Township Housing Task Force. Okay, I hope you all received the email that I attached the recap of the last meeting. Andy Haynes from Gatesburg Road Development gave a good presentation over a lot of the <laughs> hurdles to jump over for affordable housing. So that's all in the report that I sent to each PC member. Um, I I would like to make one clarification for that report on page six. Um, it is mentioned about the community uh, community development block grants or the CDBG grants. Uh, Andy had mentioned that any borough or township can get those. In our case with Patton Township, it's actually Center County that would get those grants. And then as the township, we could then apply to the county to receive a portion of those funds. And we have not done that in the last 20 years. And the last time we did it was to get some of the affordable housing that's on Woody Crest. I just wanted to make that clarification. Thank you. Thank you. Jim, Jim I appreciated that email today. And one of the things that's always rang true in real estate, and that is it is expensive to build a house from scratch. Yep. When we say, oh, you know what, it, let's just build a bunch of houses. Um, uh, it looked like in the numbers that was presented that it's it's really hard to do that for less than three hundred thousand in, in this area. The, uh, we start with the land prices that are already high, um, and, and you add the that's cost, the first kicker is land price. Land price, and then the cost to build. It is really tricky to to build something for less than three hundred thousand. And then if you go little ways out of town where land is a little bit cheaper, you're still building a house. And a lot of times they're building a house that doesn't fit in with the neighbors. Correct. Uh, so <laughs> it's kind of a no win situation at times. Right. It's kind of why, you know, we, we kick this around in the past uh, with, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going in another direction about uh, uh, accessory dwellings within some of these bigger houses. Um, but but you know we we can't just build houses for 
uh, less than 300,000. So when we look at choices that keep, we, ought, we, we as a planning commission need to kind of understand the gravity of that. Um, only other comment I would have to make is Mr. Hawbaker said that he went to a couple of the outfits and they weren't interested in workforce housing there. But is it that they weren't interested in workforce housing or they weren't interested in buying at his price? Fair question. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you. Any other business we haven't talked about? Um, so, do we have a motion to adjourn? Move we adjourn. A motion to adjourn. Meeting adjourned. Now, guys, it is, uh, guys and gals, it's 645. Um, I'm per we can go through the uh, work session or we can table it for another Monday in about two weeks. Or one week. Or in one week. Or we uh, two weeks too. I mean, there's nothing magic, but. Oh, it is on the schedule for work session next Monday, so. I would move to table till next Monday. Okay. So, okay. Uh, yeah. Time on next Monday. We want to do 4.30, 4 o'clock. 4.30 is fine with me. 4.30 yeah, is unanimous. Yeah. yeah. All right. See you all next Monday at 4.30. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take care, everybody. Thank Bye. you. Go Gonzaga. <laughs>